everyone, and welcome down to episode number 38, Jeremy Howe of the Down South Photo Show with me, Brendan Waits, and my good friend over that way in Tasmania, sitting in front of a gigantic boulder, it's Cam Blake. Hello, Cam. That's me holding on to this show. It's all on my shoulders. <laughs> um, thing that you've got broad shoulders. You're 38, carrying this whole thing. 38, Jeremy Howe. Like, is that a football terminology that no one's going to get? Everyone knows who Jeremy Howe is. Is he the guy that takes all the screamers? He, we're used to. He plays more in the... No, well, he still does a bit, but uh, right. he, he was a Melbourne player that got traded to Collingwood. Hollywood, and- Collingwood, yeah, I know it is. Yeah, I know who he is. And, yeah. and he's got a lot of tough stickers and he um and he's got absolutely nothing to do with a photography podcast nothing whatsoever except no. that he is number 38 and this is episode number 38 the down south photo show it is now Welcome. everyone sorry for we're, we're being a bit intermittent with our episodes and we apologize for that um lots can going we, on can we rephrase um, we i apologize for <laughs> being really slack and out of touch but hey it is what it is um mm. We know we, we, we got a little bit of feedback. <laughs> yeah, someone, we did. Someone asked on the weekend, hey, where the hell's your show? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Kev. <laughs> special Where's mention. Kev? <laughs> thanks, special mention to Kev, um, who messaged me and said, where the hell are you? Yeah, that's um, right. That'd well, be a good slogan for a tourism ad. It would, the bloody would, hell are you? Yeah. Well, if Kev, if Kev wants to start to pay us for turning up for this, then happy days. <laughs> oh, Kev, Kev pays. Don't worry. He, he pays every time he comes along on a right. workshop with me. <laughs> okay. Well... Uh, yeah, I, I haven't seen one red cent of that, so bad luck. We, we're not we, sponsored by Kev. No, we're not yet. Right. Kev, if you'd like to sponsor the show, please feel free. Yeah, um, a good Olympus user, although he does float over to the dark side with Canon, um, but he always picks up his Olympus for Canon. some reason. Yeah, Canon, not sponsored by Canon. Canon. Right, yeah. uh, good start. Yeah, we're, it's been, um, yeah, so it's been a couple of weeks since we did our last episode. So uh, mm-hmm. lots going on work-wise and uh, behind the scenes-wise. I know, Cam, you've had some days in Flinders yeah. Island. Yeah, I've just got back from the beautiful Flinders Island. Can uh, you tell our listeners where Flinders Island is, please? Yes, it is an island off an island off an island. So uh, it is in Bass Strait between... Uh, southern Victoria and northern Tasmania. Uh, it is about, I actually measured this on the time I was there. I got on Google Maps and yeah, you can measure things on Google Maps. It's really cool. Yes. Uh, and it's about 140 kilometers southeast of Wilson's Promontory. Okay. So it's not far as the crow flies. Um, no. It's a beautiful I island. I want to swim it. But no. no. Well, there's, there's a, there's some, it's, um, there's a group of islands called the Ferno Islands. I think it's called the Ferno Group. Okay. Um, and there's over about 50, 55 islands make up this group, which is pretty cool. This is the biggest one, and it's about a hundred, uh, about 1, 1,300 square kilometers big. It's pretty, pretty big. Um, it's huge. Yeah, it's pretty big. So, um, so yeah, we just spent four days and uh, well, five, four nights and five days on the island. Uh, had four wonderful guests. Uh, this is a bit of a carryover from good old COVID last year. We were meant to do it last year, they couldn't do it, then I couldn't do it, then. Flinders couldn't do it, and then we did it. So um, we had a great time. We had, um, I'm not sure if you've been watching the weather down in Tasmania. Boy, oh, boy, did we dodge a bullet on Flinders Island. Um, <laughs> Hobart, Lisa's in the background here, Hobart got about 140 millimetres in one night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lisa sent me a message and said, the back room's flooding and the garage is leaking. Mm. And I said, well, I'm drinking beer on an island. Mm. Not my problem. <laughs> good, good luck with that. Yeah, good luck with that. So, no, we had a great time. We, we dodged a lot of the weather, although we did get a little bit of the low pressure that was spinning around Tassie. It clipped us a little bit on the second last day. So we got some rain and a bit of wind, but we got some really, really cool stormy clouds. And Yeah, I was going to say it must have added to the, uh, the mm. cloudiness, the, the, uh, the clouds. And stuff. Yeah, the cloudiness, that's, that, the atmosphere maybe. Jeez, I'm out of touch. Yeah, you're out of touch. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was really good. We had a great time uh, going again uh, next year, same time, May next year. Um, but, yeah, we stayed at a beautiful place called Mountain Seas Lodge. Uh, Tony and Scott were the hosts of the accommodation. And, gee, I'll tell you what, the food we ate, oh, Tony's a chef and it was good. Uh, she cooked us uh, slow-cooked beef cheeks. I've never had beef cheeks before. All right. Boy, oh boy, were they good. Uh, mm. And some pastas, seafood. We had everything. Fresh crayfish. Uh, the, you, you name it, we had it. So it was a really good trip. 
Uh, can't wait to get back there again and got some really lovely photos. It's a very granite orientated island. So lots of very much like a Wilson's promontory if everyone's been there. Yeah. Uh, very much similar. It's obviously connected all on the land somewhere. Uh, but yeah, it was good. So uh, yeah. it was good fun. And you've been a busy little beaver in your shop, haven't you? Yes, we have. Um, when you're back on the tools, because you're pretty much the only staff member. <laughs> well, I've got sort of one and a half staff, other staff members so at the moment. Yeah. So it's a little bit, uh, bit tough, but that's all right. We've got um, plenty of work. I'm, my printers are just going all the time now, which is great. Mm. So mm. I'm printing a lot of um, canvases. I did I did a canvas print for a guy from Tasmania as well. Oh, really? Actually. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't yeah. turn out all right. Uh, it's very good. Yeah, it's okay. very good. Yes, that's good. Um, is if I was organised, I'd have it here and I'd be holding it up right now. I was going to say uh, it's not finished, is it? It's it's not finished. <laughs> <laughs> it will be. Yeah. Well, it will be. Will be. I, I it guess. Be. I guess it the will. guy in Tassie told you when he needed it by. <clears throat> Yes, Maybe. he did, and it will, it will, it'll get there. So your background is Flinders Island. Flinders Island. This is <laughs> I said the name before. Now I'm going to stuff it up. Fotheringate Bay. Oh, you're all over it. Yeah, and, and behind me on the there's a big boulder over here, which is Brendan and the show, pretty much carrying it all. And yeah. on this side is uh, Mount Streslecki. So Streslecki Range, uh, not the Streslecki ranges that are on the mainland of Australia. This is Mount Streslecki. Who is this Streslecki dude? I'm going to look this guy He's up. He's probably a Dutch explorer or something well, like that. Well, it, it sounds it. Sounds, sounds Dutchy. Dutch. Yeah, we're going to have to look. Uh, but, you know, there's people yelling at their phones right now saying, you idiot, don't you know who this guy is? But yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I did. I even did Australian history in high yeah. school, but it's, that's 30 years ago. So I'm going to have to look this up. 30? Uh, anyway, yeah, so yeah, yeah. 30. <laughs> um, so this is Flinders Island and you're floating above... Can I have a guess what beach that is? You can have a guess unprompted. <laughs> is that Bell's Beach? Oh, my goodness. How did you know? Oh, just the staircase gave it away from me. Mm. Oh, yeah, it would have. It's iconic, that staircase. Yeah. That's the, uh, that's the stair staircase they mm. use when they have the World Surfing League there like they had at Easter time. Yeah. Um, yeah, Bell's Beach. So right. and that, that, there's, a, we, there's a surfer right there. So yeah. It was good timing of him to just pop down. Where, where were you? And you're, you're obviously not in there. Are you? You're out the way. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm flying the drone off. Off. I'm actually in this photo. I'm about a kilometer away. Oh, so out of sight. No, I could see it. Oh, okay. Um, That's okay. <laughs> just if I sort of squinted like that. Actually, this is my old Phantom drone. If you know right. the Phantom. They're yeah. massive, big white blobs well, in the sky. You can never see the. the was, you can never see the Phantom. True. The good thing, well, ironically, you could see this Phantom quite yeah. well. Yeah, um, they were good. That's what I liked about the old ones. Yeah. Uh, the Phantom was a lot heavier, so it was way more stable and heavier wind. Yeah. Uh, but you could see the bloody thing. Like, it, yeah. you just looked up and there it was, whereas the, the Mavic is so... Well, the the, the, so they, they've, they've made a Mavic and they've made it sky grey. Yeah, like well, it, you... the, the color is exactly the same color as your yeah. jacket there, and you know, every we... gray cloud that you go past, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I know it's it's nuts. Anyway, that was that was a really cool day um, mm. at Bells, and there was some good surf going and mm. uh, good I great colors. Love, love the top down stuff. I think like, I was going to say stuff. I'm going out on the limb here because you don't mm. you don't get out much with your camera anymore. I gather no. you didn't get to Dalesford. No. You said you were going on three episodes in a row and you didn't. Oh, I did have a bit going on. Yeah. You um, give me a lead pass? Yeah, I'll give you a lead pass. <laughs> but I think I think you are an aerial photographer now. I, I actually think your drone not, drone I'm one's down. Not a photographer at all. That's the problem. Well, you're a drone operator then. Well, the last time I went on an actual shoot, believe it or not, like, okay, I did, I've done a couple. Like we did... Uh, Port Ferry, and yes. um, we've done, you know, I'd, I'd shoot here like, every now and then and take my stuff out. Well, my yeah. last actual trek was Mungo. And believe mm. it or not, that's 12 months ago. Yeah. So um, you need to get staff and you I need know. to get out with camera. I'll get there. I'll get there. It's fine. Um, but I, I, I like your down, top down stuff. Mm. I don't, and you know why I like it? This, this is going to blow your mind out. The reason I like your top down stuff more than anything else is because you can't drop skies into top top down stuff. You can't. <laughs> you can't, you can't make it up. You have to shoot down. No, I could. I could go go to town on that. That that water's not even there. Those stairs. That's from. So what, all, all that is is just a split screen with a stock wave coming in and a stock set of stairs and a bit of beach in between. 
Yeah, that's well, that's the case. You're an incredible blender. <laughs> um, no, I, I love, I do love using the drone, and I think yeah. I like using the drone just because it's a cool toy. It's good yeah. fun to fly the thing around. And really, when it, when we come to the crunch, us photographers are really just big kids, aren't we? Absolutely, and we love our toys. Now we, love our we, toys. we do have a a, a, a um, running sheet here, but I'm skipping oh. ahead. I want to talk about the new drone that just came okay. out, um, the DJI Mavic. Mini three, Mavic, Mavic three mini. Anyway, uh, so what DJI have done Gross. is done your research this week, and they did it. I've even got the this. I just looked at the video of it this morning. Um, what they've done is they've put out a new drone because you know they put out six a year. So let's put out another one. They this put out little, drones faster than they put out cameras these days. They do. This one's mm. a little different because, well, yeah, it is a little different. It can shoot vertically. So the camera can actually twist sideways, so right. you can shoot vert. So you can shoot portrait, portrait landscapes, portrait orientated landscapes, which we've talked mm. about before on the show. We have. That they can be really useful because sometimes people have walls that will only take a vertical mm. section. So instead and of having to crop down a photo, mm. or you know, when you're out in the field, remember to tilt your camera. Well, yeah. now the drone can tilt the camera as well which is right. kind of kind of cool i like i like think like that bit of innovation and the other amazing thing that i really like about this one it can look up right so you have a drone that you can well the footage i saw they had a dude he flew the drone off a cliff went down and then pointed the camera back up at himself which i thought was really yeah it's how it's how pretty cool. and it and you can't see the props so oh, I'm looking uh, at the specs now. Oh, I can see what it's doing now. Yeah. They've, so they've they've turned the gimbal upside down. The gimbal's weird now. So it, yeah. it's not weird. It's new, and and I think it's ace. Like it's it's a pretty. Hopefully that comes to the. Yes, ace. I just use the term ace. <laughs> it's not grass. It's ace. <laughs> it's ace. Hopefully that comes to the Mavic Four or whatever with the bigger sensor. So the the right. downside, of course, with the Mini is it still runs the smaller sensor. So yeah. The sensor but is similar having to what said you find that, on your phone. It, it's a 48 megapixel pixel, 48 yeah. megapixel sensor. Yeah. So it uses in, interpolation to achieve that. So uh, it's a native okay. 12 megapixel sensor, Times but it does the four. like uh, I think Olympus like the it. the artist formerly known as Olympus does. They, yeah, they do. Yeah. What's it called? Pixel shifting. Pixel shifting. Yeah. Yeah, where right. where it actually takes the photos, but. Right in quick succession and then just literally moves the pixels one pixel to the left, one pixel up, one pixel right, one pixel down. Right. And it has a 47 minute flight time. That's pretty impressive. That is impressive and outrageously 15 kilometer range. Yeah. Like you're not going to see that. You're not going to see that. <laughs> you're not going to see it 500 meters away, let alone 1500. That's Come funny on. because they talk about the range and they say, oh, I can go 15 and, and they've got to one up themselves all the time. I understand yeah. this. This, is, this yeah. is marketing more than anything. But I think the point is if it can go 15 kilometers, the range Google. of 15 kilometers, it means it's probably not going to have many dropouts when it's not 15 kilometers away. Like it's a pretty strong signal base. Yeah. So from your, from your, um, the controller to the drone must be pretty strong. So that's, well, that's, that, that's a good thing. It is a good thing. It is. Yeah. If, I don't know if you, um, I know you have, and I definitely have had a drone go off the air on me, and you just yes. go, "Wow, yeah. okay, what now?" <laughs> it's like when you have a car accident in the wet, and you say, "I can't control the car." You take your hands off the wheel and wait yeah. for the crash. Yeah. Um, and it retails for about just over eleven hundred Australian. Yeah. Now I think Australian. I believe that's I believe that's drone only. only. That is drone yeah. only. Yeah. Uh, or you can get it with. Um, <clears throat> A DJI app installed for mm -hmm. thirteen hundred, um, or you can buy the drone only without a remote control. So God knows what the use of that is yeah. uh, for nine hundred eighty nine dollars. The is reason they're DJI doing that Australia. is because it's backwards compatible with their old controller, which I think is oh, that's a good incredible. thing. Well, it's a good thing because it that's means incredible. that people, you know, aren't throwing away. It's yeah. The use, if, I, the if, only, if only Nikon and Canon had used that idea when they brought out their mirrorless cameras instead of ripping everyone off for adapters so they can back them compatible their lenses. Yes. Show is not sponsored by Nikon or Canon because we don't yeah. want them to sponsor us because I'll probably, probably never, probably never, never would. <laughs> Imagine if they sponsored us, they'd have, they'd have us doing everything backwards. All right. Just making note, it's episode 38. That's one we need to remove when Nikon and Canon come knocking for sponsorship <laughs> opportunities. Nick. Well, we, I know I know the head of Nikon sales. Mm. 
Uh, maybe we should hit up Julie and say g'day and say, hey, we I don't hang Julie. shit on we don't hang shit on Nikon anywhere near as much as Canon. Do you that's want to right. spot, so, do you want, do you right, want to spot exactly. that show? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be that's funny. Right. I can imagine yeah. the answer would be no. <laughs> uh, you know, but before we go any further, you know, you know what we are getting a request for. Go on. I, this is this is not on the running sheet. Uh, the Bright Festival of Photography in October yes. is fast arriving, and people want us to do a live show of this show at that show. That's right. And that's exactly when I'm in New Zealand. So it's going to be interesting, ah, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> Maybe I suck. can do it from New Zealand. Wow. What are you doing in New Zealand? You're not taking photos, clearly. Uh, I will be, but I'll be visiting have, family. My brother lives in yes, New Zealand. He does. Uh, so we'll be over there f- uh, then. I right. think it I think it clashes, but if it doesn't, I'm coming to Bright. We'll work it out. That's fine. We haven't yep. booked we haven't booked our flights yet, so we could. Well, what's more important, the Down South Photo Show at Bright Festival, or going yeah. to see your brother who's a Kiwi? Going to see my brother who's a Kiwi. Yeah, that's what um, I said too. Yeah, he he watches. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Um, no, no one watches this show. Just finishing off on the drone thing. Yes. Um, DJI, I think it was last year or two years ago when the new Mini first came out. Of course, uh, the in America the FAA said you know, drones over 250 kilogram, kilograms, 250 grams have to be registered uh, yes. to be able to fly, uh, fly where, even if you're a hobbyist. Yeah, that's right. And so DJI went, ha ha, let's build a drone that's 249 grams. grams. So it yeah. is exactly 249 grams. Yeah. Um, and the disclaimer is if you put their longer life battery in it, it's actually 10 grams over that. So if you fly it with the low life battery, the shorter no, they got to check that when you're up. I know it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. They're clutching at straws, but um, good on DJI. Uh, mm. it, this little drone looks awesome. Like really, really cool. Yeah. Um, Look, like I've got the same as you. Haven't we got the same one? And yep. I don't use mine. I actually almost thought about taking my drone to Flinders Island, but it's a national. There's a national park there, and it's got a, it's got an airport, and it's a small island. Just didn't feel right to do that. But mm. yeah, they are incredible little machines, and I I do wish I used mine a lot more because I do love that top down view that you're oh, doing. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And there's so many cool aspects you can get that you just can't get on the ground. But yeah. um, having said that as well, there's been a few shots being floated around Tasmania, a few people coming down from the Big Island down to this island with their drones, flying a hundred percent illegally in national parks around Tassie. Yeah. Can, can if people just stop being a yeah, dick? If you're, if you're watching the show and you're one of those dicks that fly drones in national parks, can you just stop ruining it for everyone else, please? Yeah. Like, it's yep. cool. Yeah, you get nice photos and you get a bit of a bit of a like on Instagram and you get a bit of a share on Facebook or whatever. But really, everyone knows you're doing it illegally. You're not new. It's been done. No, um, exactly. Yeah. And just you're freaking the freak out of the wildlife yeah. as well. Yeah, stop yeah. and all you're doing is promoting other idiots to come down and do the same thing. Yes. So, so that's my mm. rant. Hey, maybe I got a new, uh, here's a new section of the show. Cam's rant. Cam, Cam. <laughs> when do we I get a segment? Come uh, on. Oh, we, all, oh, Bre- nah, it's all about Cam. I get it. What nah, about Brent, Brendan's rant? I, actually, I could probably do my own podcast just ranting on, I reckon. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> anyway, moving on. We'll get I off think that. There was a, I think there was a movie, Grumpy Old Men. I think that's what it yeah. might have been. Um, Thanks. Yeah. So, there you go. We linked all that together. That's my my background is the top down view of Bell's Beach. Yeah. And so we're still we're still at the intro of this episode. Pretty, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Right here. Um, our main topic, well, one of our main topics tonight, but um, this is a bugbear of mine. And uh, mm. I see it a lot because I print photos for a lot of people. I am forever correcting horizons. Um, if there's a horizon in your photo. Just make it straight. Like, what? What is this? How? How can we not get this right? And look, hand in the air. I back when I started, and you know, last century, I I was taking. I was always having crooked horizons, forever straightening horizons. Uh, when you shot with film, that was a bit hard. But now with digital, uh, I'm you know, I'm straight straightening horizons um, is a lot easier. But you got to straighten your horizon. See, I can't oh. read that, Cameron. Cameron's oh, now damn writing it. notes to us. I can't. I was, I was just saying, this is Brendan's rant segment. Yeah, nice. Damn it. This is, this is my rant. But, um, um, official. If, you, if you are taking landscape photos, unless you're doing top-down photos with a drone, yeah. you're going to have a horizon in there. Um, yeah. It really shouldn't be that. Now, if you, if you suffer from crooked horizon syndrome, CHS, 
you need to <laughs> you need to um, do something to fix that. And the best yeah. and quickest way to fix is a tripod. Yes, we yep. get that. But also, you can very easily put the little grid lines up on your yeah. screen. Yeah, and 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 go even one step easier than that. There's one single button in Lightroom you press, and it straightens yes. the horizon. Yes. So yeah, I I, I agree. Um, we actually had but this that's cheating though. What editing? We can't. I thought I thought straightening her. That's that's cheating, right? Well, only if you're not dropping a sky in. Um, right, okay. So we had this conversation. It's not Flinders. how you took the photo though. Your the horizon was crooked. You're going to go back to Flinders Island and take all the photos again. Yeah. Look, I I'd happily do that. Um, <laughs> but we had this conversation on Flinders, and then yeah, it's it's well, it's not a bugbear as mine, but it it's one of those things that for me it's an instant eyesore. Like you look at it straight away, and you're like, it's a bit off. Yeah. It's yeah. a little bit down, like, and you know, I, I'm a little bit cautious these days to give too much input on how you know you see them online on Instagram and people putting up their photos, you know, on social media, and you're like, oh, gee, that horizon's straight, not straight. But if I say anything, then I'm an a hole, and you know, I'll be, I'll get shot down, and you know, maybe they wanted it. <laughs> so you just don't say anything. But it's a really oh, such... no one wants a crooked horizon unless it's at 45 degrees. All That's right? right. So yeah. But Let's it's 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 that. one of it's one of the most I think it's one of the most no, next to focus and things being out of focus. So crooked horizon is probably the next best bugbear of me mine when you look at a photo. If it's slightly off straight away and you look at it and go, well, that that's just that's just not they're not paying attention. It's not attention to detail. So yeah. and like you said, it's very easy to fix. Um, look, I understand and I have sympathy because I hate tripods. I have sympathy when you're trying to set the tripod up on sand or on a rock and trying to get it all and you got little, you know, spirit level and, you know, the cameras have a level inside them as well. Yep. Like I, I get that. And I get that you can be a slight tad off and I'm, I'm happy to accept that. But if you're going to the effort of putting your photo through post editing and you're still missing it, then you're not paying attention to what you're doing. And, and it's, uh, it's a number one, actually tonight I just got back from teaching. Uh, I told you a couple episodes ago, there was a young kid, 12 year old kid who wanted to get some teaching. I've just done my first session with him. It was great. We had a good time. Um, but we're talking to him and his dad while he was there and, and just said to him, I said, one of the biggest things, cause he wants to enter competitions and stuff like that. I said, one of the biggest things for entering competitions and pictures for landscape photography is if I see one come through and I'm judging and it's a little bit off, it's almost just swipe to the next photo. Like it's, yeah, it's so obvious. So yeah, it's yes, an absolute it, fundamental, isn't it? It is. And I can imagine because <laughs> I know you so well, I can just imagine you sitting at the computer screen, looking at one of your customers' photos and just seeing it pop up just a slight slide off. Oh, and, and, and I you now... You should just print them crooked. Well, I can't help myself. I, I just have to straighten it. I just, like, and nine times out of 10, I'll tell the customer or yep. I'll ask them if I can straight if they're there in the store. Yeah. Um, have you ever had anyone say no? No, leave it crooked. Never. Never, <laughs> never, not once. It's like, oh, oh yeah, it is, isn't it? It's like, yeah. yeah now look how much better it looks. Oh yeah, you fixed it a lot. It's like, yeah, it was. Unless, it, unless, it, unless the customer's name is Eileen. Oh dear. Um, the, the, <laughs> so the 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 thing that causes my horizons to go crooked when I'm shooting handheld is, I, it's almost like I'm, I've framed up the shot, and I some quite often I'll start with the horizon, and then and then even even to the point where I'll bring the the frame right down and just have yep. the top of the frame level with the horizon and just take it back up evenly. Yeah. If I haven't got the grid lines on. And then it's like I'll start looking at other things that are in the shot, leading lines, you know, boulders, uh, yeah. what the lighthouse. And it's sort of you, you it's so easy to lose and, and get distracted by yeah the main subject in frame. And quite often it's this way. So I'll because it's the side of the trigger. So my yeah. horizons will always be right hand down. Yeah, the dominant <laughs> like, hand. Yeah, dominant, dominant. I guess that's what it is. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it's just it's it's it amazes amazes me how often I do it. Yeah, and you and know, the thing that's really interesting about it as well is that what you know probably eighty or eighty or ninety percent of the time landscape images have horizons. Like you know, unless you're in a forest or you know you're shooting down like you're doing on the drone, you know most of your shots are going to have a horizon in there. If if you're not picking up a crooked horizon. Um, you know, really, you, you're probably you're fundamentally failing the physics of composition. Like, you, it's a fail off off the bat if you can't That's get right. the, if you can't get the earth flat, yeah. even though it isn't. <laughs> if you can't get that line flat, then you know what's the rest of your composition going to be? And I, I said I'd do a bit of judging, and we've got the, the Beaker Street 
Science Award. We we spoke about that last year. It's actually coming up again. Yes. Um, and there was a couple of shots wow. in there last year. Yeah, no, uh, there's a couple of shots in there last year. I'm like, oh, that's a nice shot, but geez, it's just a tad off center. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's you know it is detrimental to you know if you are entering competitions, it's a de- it's a dead set big red cross really. So no, um, either fix it on your tripod or in Lightroom if you go down the very bottom, or you can you can do it manually or down the bottom. There is also a section that allows you just to level things and perspective and all that kind of stuff. It's literally one button and it does it and you move on. Um, I used to have it set up when you import images into Lightroom. I used to have that set up as a preset that everything comes in, automatically comes in. But then I found sometimes Lightroom would pick up another room and another line and I'd I'd be all over the shop. But Uh, In Photoshop, if you want to get really picky with it, you can actually use the line tool and you can draw a line on your horizon and then go rotate image arbitrary and, yep. it, and it rotates it, it straightens your line, which yeah. straightens the whole image. So that's yeah. a, another way you can do it as well. Yeah. Um, and, and there's, other, there's other things as well that can affect horizons that I've noticed is also lens profiles in Lightroom. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when you press the lens profile, the whole thing warps out or, um, you know, sometimes you'll get little curvatures at the end, which is like an optical default of your lens. Um, so also tick them, make sure you tick the lens default buttons, uh, lens yeah. profile buttons on your Lightroom. Yeah, barrel distortion is mm. really common on ultra wide angle lenses. So it is, yeah. uh, correcting that is important. So yeah, changing your lens profiles and things like that can really help. Mm. Nice. All right. So you got that off your chest? Probably not, but yeah. it, it, it'll do. If you a have a rant, send it into Brendan. You, if you, if you got a photography rant that you want Brendan to get red in the face about, <laughs> link below send it through this Am is a se- this face? is this is no you know but this is going to be a segment i want to see you get shitty each week <laughs> <laughs> so no thanks i, <laughs> I could do it i could do it uh, hang, hang, on, hang on what was the thing you sent me today the other day about that photography group are you part of this photography group oh don't I, don't go I, there it's just the worst and i i've <laughs> I've, I've unfollowed it All i'm right. not going to name it it's oh it's this facebook it's basically become a facebook group uh look it's called photography tricks i'm not sorry i'm not gonna i'm not gonna name name it it. and and if you're if you're on it i mean no don't do what you want but it's fair income what happens now is people people get on there and they it's how can i put this um so so you'll get a pro photographer cameron this is a professional yeah. photographer this is worldwide too this is not just okay Australia. this happens all over the world, right and they'll take a wedding photo for example this is a professional photographer and they will put the photo in crappy facebook resolution on on the screen on, in yeah. the group and say can someone please remove the little boy third from right and then people do it and right. send and send the image back to them in low resolution now there's a good 15% of people on there who are kind of like me and just take the piss. And it's so yeah. funny. Like they'll put like a smiley face emoji over the little kid oh, yes. you know, yep. or, or yep. they'll replace him with a T-Rex, or <laughs> which I must admit is quite funny. The, yeah. the reason I got off it was because all of a sudden it just became this, this just so many people just saying, here, edit my photo for me for free. Yeah. You know, I'm like, no. <laughs> what was it, what was it called again? Photography. Photography tricks. Okay, so people are doing yeah, so, tricks online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 they they started this trend about a month ago called swirls. Do you know about this? Mm, yeah. Okay. Move on. Uh, yeah. I know, yeah. I know. I know. And it's I know, just I know, like, yeah. oh my god, it's so bad, but I did it anyway. You, you know what? <laughs> I, I'm going to insult an entire league of people who shoot a certain genre on here. Um, when you said <laughs> when you said swirls, when you said get swirls, ready, <laughs> the lens balls. Oh my God! What a waste well, of money! I, I don't know. I don't know why people <laughs> shoot lens balls. Um, it's, uh, yeah. it's just the worst. I mean, you want to you want to hear a, you want to hear a funny, quick funny quick story about how I yes. insulted an entire genre of photographers. So the very first Bright Festival of Photography I did back in 2019, um, Matt and uh, Nick, who run the show, that was my first time. They got me up there, and. It was almost like, you know, let's 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 see how this guy goes on his first trip. So they made me do sunrise through to Astro every day of the thing. So oh, I was nice. work, I was I, I think I slept four hours for the whole weekend. And in that four hours, I didn't sleep. I, I went out to the brewery and had a few drinks and did a whatever. So the last day I had to get up and do a presentation on Tasmania. And I I, I don't think I'd even got home. I think I got home and went straight to this presentation. Anyway, 
talking about Tassie and I had some pictures of fungi come up on the, the screen. I said, oh, Tassie's great for fungi. And um, I said, oh, you know, but the people that shoot fungi are a little bit weird and they, you know, they generally got blue hair and they're all a bit weird and purple oh, and all this kind of stuff. No. And anyway, <laughs> so there was about, you know, hundred people there listening in, in this marquee and I, you know, I was a bit hung over. So I didn't really pay much attention to what was going on. So I did the presentation, you know, got off stage and a few people came up and asked me questions about Tassie. And here comes this lady down the middle of the marquee with blue hair walking straight to me and said, I like shooting fungi. What's my pro? What's the problem with having blue hair or something like that? And oh, I, yeah. I backpedaled and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. now just a bit of a joke, bit of this, bit of that, and sort of yeah. tried to. Def- so, yeah, uh, for those who like shooting fungi, good on you. It's a great yes. genre of, stu- of photography and you're not weird at all. If you've got blue hair, we love you. Thanks for listening to our show. Yeah, yeah. And they're gone. They're not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah. fine. I, I've got better than having no hair like me. Mm, um, no, that. having no hair is fine as well. Uh, so we wanted to also talk a, uh, about uh, another topic, and that was how long do you wait for a photo? So when do you give up and, and when do you hang in there? Now, if you're traveling, mm. uh, sometimes you have to give up because yeah, yeah. You, you can't. You just can't yeah. stay there for the sunset tomorrow night or or whatever but yeah. i think you're are you talk, i think we're talking more about you know maybe in your own backyard like you know if yeah. you, when when do you photographically when should you stop trying yeah. to get the photo so um yeah what, 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 what do you want to talk about there cam um well i think it's a good it's a good question and and again this is one that we sort of chat about on workshops and stuff like that is even tonight with the young the young guy i was teaching as well we were down at the waterfront at hobart and uh, we were wrapping it up, but the sky just kept getting purple, yellow, red, pink. It just kept getting better and better and better and better. This is and tonight. This is tonight. Yeah, we had the same thing here. I yeah, it, it yeah. was uh, it was a stunning sunset here. Mm. Um, just that beautiful color gradient from you know purple all the way to to yellow or the other way around. Um, and our time had finished. Like so, I'm like, well, we're sort of getting all wrapped up. I'm like, we can't leave. Like we've got to stay here and keep shooting this this sunset it's incredible and it really was but it, it does bring up an interesting question how long do you wait and you know like you said there's there's parameters there that you might be traveling or you might you know you might have someone waiting for you or you got to get home or whatever it might be but i think um in regards to landscape photography if you're wanting to really improve your output you, you need to dedicate that chunk of time to not have any restraints on it so if you say look I'm going to Flinders Island or I'm going to, you know, Ocean Grove or whatever I might be doing, 12 Apostles. I want to get a great shot of the the summer apostles, but I'm not going to leave early because when you know, you guarantee as soon as you leave early, the the sky is going to pop or one of the apostles will fall down or, you know, you're getting the roar that pops up or whatever. So I think it's really important. And um, one of the legends of of the game, Peter Dombrowskis, there was a story that I wanted to put to, to our listeners about how he used to go about things. So for those that don't know, you should know by now, amazing landscape photographer, um, you know, went everywhere around Tassie, you know, was so patient in what he did, but I actually bought some old film off a lady whose husband, late husband used to go out and shoot with Peter. And he went out one day and came back two days later threw his camera in, on the couch and said, I'm not doing that ever again. I'm not going out with Peter. I'm not shooting with him ever again. Uh, we hiked two days to sit by a river and sat there for 12 hours waiting for this one moment for him to take a photograph. We missed all the other things we wanted to see, but he was, he was the master at it. He, he didn't uh, restrict himself to time or location. He just sat there and waited for that moment to happen. So we don't need to go to that extreme in some situations, but you know, if you like I said, if you're looking to get those shots, sometimes you've got to, you know, sit, sit there. It and, and, really depends. So it, hmm. it depends on where you are. So if, if it's like for me, I've got this beautiful coastline that I'm quite close to. I can get back home. Yeah. You know, I, I could travel for an hour, two hours and, and be fine to get back home. So I get, that's fine. I think though, if I, if I wanted a particular shot and I've got access to it, you take as long as you yeah. have to, to get the shot. Yeah, I right. find I'm lazy and I'll, give up way too easily yeah um that's just a low attention span that's you know borderline <laughs> that's, a, that's, ADHD. A, that's, that's, that's a psychological thing <clears throat> yeah. absolutely um yeah. the point lonestar lighthouse is a classic example if you can 
you know, if you can get to that lighthouse uh, for sunrise, but get there at like 4 a.m. Yeah. Like I'm talking when, uh, you know, before you can see anything and then first light arrives, you know, yeah. I would I would like to shoot that place from like 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. Yeah. You know, like right through, um, yeah. you know, and, and it changes, it can change your main subject so much, particularly a lighthouse because the way the light falls on such a, you know, vertical structure and you can get the light, on yeah. one side and it moves up you get shadowing all that sort of stuff different yeah. contrasts and that yeah. sort of stuff um you know and and i think you know one of your muses yosemite national park what are those famous waterfalls there that yeah. only light up at certain yeah, times of the that's year? right yeah you know, it's, and, it's and, only for, it's only for like an hour every yeah. year or something yeah. Yeah. yeah and there's people that go there you know from all over the world mm. and then it's fogged out <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know and, 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 and that's 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 the thing you know you might have all these grand plans to go and shoot a certain you know that bucket list item and and you might just not get the weather and you might yeah. just not get the conditions yeah you know you might get there like speaking of yosemite we went there actually eight years ago as as we speak wow and, and we yeah and we rocked up to that classic tunnel view and there's people everywhere cars mm. everywhere you know you might not get the spot you want so <clears throat> but yeah i think it's it's dedication i think really it's dedication to the art yeah um, it is. if you're it if you because if, yeah. The best, the best landscape photographers. So the guys that, and gals that we idolize. Mm. When you look at their work, look at Ben Horn, perfect yeah. example. Man, he'll go out to a spot and he'll just wait. Yeah. <laughs> he'll just yeah. pitch himself up there and yeah. hours on end, you know, to yeah. get because he knows he's been there before. He's seen the light. He missed the shot that he wanted. And that, right, that's going to happen again. He yeah. takes notes. He knows where the sun's going to be and yeah, and that's where going. um. Photo pills. Have you got photo pills? We've talked about photo pills before. I do have photo, photo pills. pills. Again, I spoke about this on on Flinders and tonight. Um, it's a really really good app to help you prepare and and plan shots. Like some, you know, some shots happen, you know, just out of pure luck. You're there at the right time and it happens. But other shots can take months to plan and to get right. And if you put the effort in and you get the planning right, then you got you're going to get rewarded with something really good. So. Um, yeah, I always say to people, don't be a lazy photographer, you know, like exactly what you said, Brendan, if you go into a lighthouse or going to somewhere and the sun rises at five o'clock, don't get there at five to five, mm. get there at four o'clock, yep. you know, wait for that yep. sun to come up, see the entire sort of light spectrum come up and, and, and fade into the day um, and get too bright. But, you know, you've got to be in it to win it. And if you're not, then you're going to, you know, you're going to probably walk away with Less, that's uh, right there's images. always <laughs> going to be a compromise yeah. um at some point and you know it's it's the the absolute thrill you get when you nail that shot that you've and, yeah. and it's not hard work to stand somewhere and no. wait, is it yeah no. it can be boring as bad shit but especially if you've okay. got a six-pack there it's incredible well thing. that's right you you know these days I, you can entertain yourself on your phone you can watch a youtube clip you yeah. can watch a down south photo show while you can listen to a for, podcast while you're waiting for the light to change damn straight so you know well, as far as how long do you wait and for a photo well it depends well do you i'm want a photo or don't you i'm going to do something <laughs> that we've never done on this show before i don't think oh uh, don't oh sorry you not that i'm going to change oh. my background to show you an example of waiting yes so this is again on flinders and we went up to this uh what's called walker's lookout and there was weather coming through that this whole low pressure system was coming through and we were getting to the point where it was cold, it was windy, it was miserable. And we had a couple of guests saying, okay, are we, are we going to move on? Where are we going next? What's going on? Are we going back for dinner? Blah, 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 blah. And I just said, you know what? We're going to sit up here, put your gloves on, put an extra layer on. We're waiting because something's going to happen here. And we had, a, this is only two rainbows. We had four rainbows out of frame. It was ridiculous. And we had this light over here light up. And we had all, you know, Stres Lecky, there's another mountain range behind me there as well. Yep. But it all happened within five minutes and if if i was a, a non-photographer with not much experience i would have said oh i think it's all done i'll go home now this is just as the sun touched the bottom of the of the um horizon so yeah yeah it pays it's a, and it's not like you said it's not a big deal just to wait you know a couple of minutes more um i challenge people though if you want a real challenge in photography take your kids with you and see how long you last absolutely <laughs> just a few absolutely. more minutes um yeah. Yeah. so yeah i think it's a it's a really good point how long do we wait i, I think the answer is as long as you have to yep yeah for um, sure it, it just becomes a question of how much do you want the shot yeah yeah um and if you want it bad enough you'll wait yeah. long enough um 
moving right along, I think we should move into our dear cam for this week. What do you think? Okay, sounds, okay. sounds good. We've covered so we all our things, haven't we? We've, we're, we're ticking the boxes. I don't, yeah. I don't know how long this pod's been running for, but somewhere about 40 minutes. We're doing all right. Oh, there you go. Lovely. Dear Cam, mm, this okay. Edith, Edith in Wollongong, we've got listeners all over the country. By the way, um, the subscriber count on YouTube is ticking. I went down. <laughs> ticking down. They don't know. You know it, it, it went in the right direction. So thanks, everyone, for uh, what are subscribing. What are we 40? Oh, I don't know. We're in the 250s region somewhere. Um, We're still in the 250s. Dear Cam, it's from Edith in Wollongong. Dear Cam, should I take notice of my camera screen after each shot or should I rely on the graphy thing on the screen instead? So the graphy thing is the technical term for it. I gather that's the histography. (laughs) I'm pretty sure they're talking about the histogram there, yes. Right. Um, Yeah, okay. Over to you, dear Cam. Um, yeah, I think you should listen to the graphy thing. Um, the, gra- yeah. <laughs> the graphy thing is very important. Um, it's something that we always teach when we're doing our little trips around. Um, the screens on the back, I think people get sucked in a lot to what the back of the screen shows them. Mm-hmm. So, And I think what a lot of people maybe don't realise is if you're shooting in RAW, that picture on the back of your screen is not a true representation of that RAW file. It's a compressed in-camera jpeg make it look sort of pretty version um but i think a lot of people look at that and go oh okay well that's what it's going to look like um i need to fix it or do something else and there's a lot of factors that can affect you know what that screen looks like you've got screen brightness you can play around with the contrasts you can play around with saturations of screen so the graphy thing that she refers to is the histogram which to me is the true output of you know what's going on with that information now I don't actually know. I should know this, but I don't. But I'm not sure if the histogram is the output of the JPEG file or if it's the output of the raw file. Well, that's it been would taken. be the, my understanding is it's the raw file. Okay. Even on yep. preview? Yes. Okay. Yep. So if that's the case, then yeah, like I have a live histogram on my camera. And most cameras these days have the live histogram, which I find invaluable because you can really see where your highlights and shadows are going to fall. Yep. So I, I would say to Edith that. Um, you need to probably one pronounce the graphy thing correctly and call it the histogram, um, <laughs> and and two maybe just do a bit of research on what a histogram is showing you and how that's representing your dynamic range and your highlights and shadows and, and so forth and yeah. why it's important. So I, I would say don't trust your screen. Your screen to me is more of a composition tool. It's like your yeah. iPhone; you can just check things, but um, the histogram is important. Yeah. So the, the histogram is. Well, it's literally a visual representation of in graph form. Mm. So, so graphy thing was not far off because it does look like a little graphy thing. The official graphy. Uh, showing you, um, yeah, things like, as you say, dynamic range, highlights, shadows, that sort of stuff, uh, and correct exposure. So um, very, very useful. If you can learn how to read a history, and it's not that difficult to learn no, how to not, read a history. Not, not that tricky. No. Um, once you do it a few times, and the live histogram thing that, I think the vast majority of SLRs now have um, even Canon probably even have them. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Um, yeah. yeah. Th- that. Um, yeah. You can get, get used to sort of glancing at it. I, I don't yeah. use it. Um, I use it if I'm, if I'm a bit sus about an image, like I look at, hang on, that looks a bit highlights look a bit clipped. All right. Let's look at yeah. the Instagram. You know, is it peaking left? Is it peaking right? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. Um, I probably don't use them as much as I used to. I think yeah. I think with experience, you sort yeah, of start, I, you start to know. But yeah. definitely for beginners or for for for, for keen enthusiasts, um, yeah. learning learning what the histogram can how it can assist you is, yeah. is pretty important. Yeah, uh, I'm just <clears throat> looking at doing a little bit of research. Are you talking? And I don't know if it does show the raw data. I don't know if it's a raw histogram or if it's just purely a JPEG histogram. It would regardless, have to be. it would have to be because yeah. what would be the point of it? It would have we to should, be. We should have probably researched this before she asked, but we didn't uh, know she was asking. We we learn with our students, with our students, with our so listeners. On, on, here we go, on petapixel.com, three common misconceptions about your camera's histogram. Your camera's histogram is based on a JPEG, even if you're shooting in RAW. The most intriguing tidbit, and one we actually haven't heard up until now, is that your camera's histogram shows JPEG information, even if you're shooting in RAW only. 
editing software on the other hand shows your raw histogram okay so you can bring up a, a histogram when you're in photoshop or lightroom you can yes. do it after the fact which is yep. fine yep. and i guess having thought about it it kind of makes sense because you're really mm. only you're talking about light in the image which isn't really going to change between the raw and a jpeg file is it like no, if you're talking right. about exposure values and expose like what areas are exposed correctly shadows yep. highlights that sort of thing yeah. that's not really going to change <clears throat> no oh, no i am actually a bit surprised that it's not Mm. using the raw anyway there's probably a reason why it has to it's yeah, probably well, a lot to do with computing power or something like that or um processing power yeah it goes on and says uh this means that the histogram in your camera will clip the highlights and darks before they're actually unrecoverable because your raw shot has more information and latitude than the jp your camera is using to generate okay. the histogram yes. keep this so it's almost it's almost a a safer version of your histogram so i guess if it you're getting de if you're getting details in your histogram in the JP, which is recording off, then you're easily going to get the information off your raw file. Correct. Correct. So yeah, okay, I can see that. Yeah. All right. Um, so there you go. That's we've we've all learned something. We've all uh, Edith and Wollongong. I hope you've learned something too. Yeah. If you have a deer cam <laughs> question uh, for us, by all means, uh, mm. hit us up. You can you can leave it in the comments below here. Yeah. Uh, you can send us an email. Smoke signals. Send us send us a uh, fax. Fax. Jeez. <laughs> what a, do, you, do you still have a fax in the shop? No. No. God, no. no. Does no. anyone have a fax these days? I don't think faxes are a thing anymore. No. I, I've i read somewhere the other day. No, they are, was, they, there is still a thing. When yeah. I used to work in the government, we still had to oh, fax things through. Yeah, of course you do. Mm. Um, <laughs> no, I, remember, I do remember reading somewhere... Anyway, I'll find out and come back to you about there are yeah. businesses that still actually rely on facts to yeah. Well, right? I know how I know Harvey Norman, my friends, I love Harvey Norman, such a good company. Um, they they still print off dot matrix printers at, in their shops. Yes, for their receipts. For their receipts. That's because ridiculous. because they've got proprietors on one side electrical and one side whatever. And they can't figure out how to amalgamate them. It's a weird <laughs> setup. I, I know a little bit too much about Harvey Norman. Yes. At least it's not you, you, you have insider knowledge. I know yes. this. Yes. Anyway, um, moving on. Thanks, Edith, for the question. Um, yes, maybe it. next time, Brendan, maybe let's research the question first. Okay. No, that'd be, that'd be boring, wouldn't it? One thing I will say, uh, just a bit of a callback to what you were talking about earlier, and that is me not being able to get my ass up to Dalesford. Uh, it's been a, it, autumn is still very much happening, folks. It's been a really late autumn. It has. Um, I'm getting images from, well, not personally, but I'm getting, I'm seeing images <laughs> from the high country, from Bright. Yes. I'm seeing images from yes. Dalesford, Bendigo. Yes. Uh, I was in Bendigo not four days ago. Um, and How there far was that from Dalesford? Oh, it's further. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was um, still quite green. Um, yeah. Mm. If there's any indication, we've got to uh, a couple of uh, deciduous trees on our, in, in our front lawn. They are as green as, they haven't even turned yet. So, right. There's still, I think it's a really late autumn this year. Yeah. Uh, it's going to push in deep into May, I reckon. Yeah. So don't feel like you've missed the boat because we've passed the uh, the typical Anzac Day weekend where autumn yeah. is normally in full flight. Um, it's weird, isn't it? I think got um, time. We, we had this conversation just the other day on Flinders with my guests. It's like we're trying to figure out what actually occurs nature-wise to mm. prolong an autumn or speed one up or whatever. But yep. we came to the conclusion that if we had a really dry but not hot summer, uh, it might be the reason because that's what we had. We didn't have a really hot summer, but we had a long, dry summer. Yeah, Maybe that's what's going on. Yep, that's exactly what – well, I mean, Victoria is not that far from Tasmania, so we had no, a similar no. kind of thing. Mm. But we have had a lot of rain of late, so yeah. – whether that change, I don't know. See more more stuff for us to learn and find out about. Mm, and, it's uh, interesting. Yeah, I love autumn. So, it's a great time of year. Oh, I think it's absolutely sensational. Well, um, I, I've actually just just sold a few. I sent out a bit of a newsletter today. Are you on my newsletter list? Probably, no, probably, 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 probably goes to my spam. Probably does. But I sent out a newsletter today just with a bit of a, a summary of what we did on Flinders. But put out there that I'm doing the bright autumn workshop. I do next year. Yep. again um and got a couple of bookings straight away so i'm really it's almost it's half how, full okay how about if i can't make bfop no you I, won't get them you won't i do them. i do that one no no no. and we do our podcast on your with, yeah with, okay with, you, with your guests episode 38 i'll make note of that, right, so that 
So that's going to be roughly, Jeremy Hale takes that's that. going to be roughly if we keep going about episode eighty. <laughs> and we'll have 256 subscribers by then we will we will um yes. cam you're off to the east coast of tasmania this week i am i'm going tomorrow to uh friday actually. oh friday. actually no today as when the podcast comes out oh, when the pod came out it's today which was actually in two days time but if you're listening on saturday it was yesterday yeah yeah so I'm on, I'm, I'm on, <laughs> by the time you hear this i'm on the east coast um yeah heading up there uh what have i got i think i got four days up there four or five days um, we're going to explore pretty much from Wineglass Bay up. Um, so we'll do uh, St. Helens, Bichino, uh Swansea, Wineglass Bay. We'll do the Bay of Fire. So a lot of this lichen, red lichen on rocks. Um, but what a lot of people don't know about the east coast of Tasmania is slightly inland, you know, maybe 50, 60K inland. You've got amazing forests of the Derby and Welbury area. Um, and you've also got incredible waterfalls. Uh, so you've got a lot up there. So we're going to have a great time. I've got, uh, I think, about five or six people coming along, picking them up in Lonnie, uh, and we head out. On in the, the bus. New, in the bus that I've got. So that's going to get a run. We gave it a good wash today and made sure it's all clean. And it's got sign writing on the bus. It does. It does. But it, I'm going to change it because it's the old person's business. So I'm going to change it around a bit. But it will have. Maybe I'll put this on the bus. <laughs> you should. <laughs> maybe we have our heads on the you can, side. You, we'll put the Down South Photo Show logo on it. We'll put camera mm. and photo on it. We'll yeah. <laughs> We we'll can take we can over just, the world. We'll put Canon. Oh, because it's sponsored by Canon. Not, not, uh, so, yeah, East Coast, it should be great. Looking forward to it. And then Brilliant. A bit of a break. And then uh, next trip is actually Flinders Ranges in South Australia. So that's not yeah. for a month or so. But Yeah, good. Well, that means we should be back on track to do weekly podcasts now, which would be great. So um, yeah. keep your questions coming in, folks, yes. if you... Uh, and and any comments and stuff, and we'll, we'll talk about I it. I love comments. Great. Um, what, what's your week got coming up for you? Uh, I'm going up to Drysdale to take photos. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Drysdale? You, no, yeah. I'm not going there. How far? Like, how far is Drysdale from where you live? It's actually called Dalesford, and I get it wrong. Uh, Drysdale. All the time. Yeah, Drysdale's bloody. Dr- Drysdale is ten kilometres away like from here. It's a long way, isn't it? Yeah, it's here. We're, so yeah. we've got Drysdale and Dalesford. Fairly okay. easy to confuse. Anyway, Dalesford. Is um, Dalesford is. I can be in Dalesford in two hours. Yeah, just do it, man. Just get Easy. off your ass. Take the family. Yeah, just dump do them it. At, dump just, them at the yeah. cafe. Yeah, just close your shop. Yeah. <laughs> it, I will. Oh, Are you, uh, we've got a federal election coming up next weekend. Oh. Are you lifting your minimum wage? Because maybe that's why you're not getting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a whole other podcast, Cam. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is. Uh, don't get me um, started. Well, yeah, no. hope, hopefully you get up to Dalesford. I will. I'll, I'll oh, drive down. No, I will. Dalesford. Yes, yeah, I'm going to take down. more photos. I will get up there and take some photos. Uh, I'll take my drone and do some top-down stuff. Of Dude, the, if I have to come up there and drag <laughs> your I ass, to. <laughs> drag your ass to Dalesford, <laughs> it's happening. So. I'd, I'd come to Tassie before you came to Dalesford. Uh, if I had a dollar for every time you'd said that. This has been episode 38 of the Down South Photo Show. Hope you've enjoyed it. We will talk to I've you. I've enjoyed it. It's been great fun. It has been fun. We'll talk to you next week. Cheerio, guys. See you guys.